Hello, and, uh, and thank you for providing me this opportunity to speak with you uh, on the occasion of this uh, OER Africa convening uh, presentation. Um, unfortunately, I couldn't be in Nairobi to be with you, uh, but I was asked to, to, to say a few things uh, from my perspective. OER's Africa's overarching vision is a vibrant and sustainable African education systems and institutions that play a critical role in building and sustaining Africa's societies and economies by producing the continent's future intellectual leaders through free and open development and sharing of common intellectual capital. Um, those are very lofty uh, goals. Uh, and based on these excerpts, it's clear to me that an important part of OER Africa's mission is to help address, um, to address the weakened state of Africa's tertiary education systems. Uh, this is not just about embedding OER um, in African tertiary educational systems. Uh, it's about OER Africa aspiring to play a transformative development role in Africa. So it's quite a big vision. Uh, the question is, to what extent has it been able to play this transformative role uh, from its inception to date? Um, it, I think that it's been instrumental in evangelizing for OER and has achieved significant impact in reaching out to the higher education constituencies to sell the value added of OER. Uh, it's clear that the recognition of OER's value is visibly higher now than before OER Africa started early in the new millennium. Uh, most recently, the, the participatory action research initiative being undertaken uh, in collaboration with a cohort of African universities has provided an opportunity for a deep dive, an opportunity to ground truth the theory of OER and learn critical lessons about what it really takes to lift the constraints to implementing OER in higher education in Africa. Uh, but obviously, uh, transforming Africa's tertiary institutions is a massive agenda that OER Africa cannot deliver on its own. In the, in the area of OER, it remains a pioneer. However, it needs to connect more systematically and effectively with other Pan-African higher education initiatives that share this overarching vision I just spelled out and that are making progress in working with networks of universities to build capacity. I'll come back to this at the end of, the, of my presentation. Okay, I, I first uh, interacted with OER Africa um, when I was asked to develop uh, or to review a communication strategy that had been developed in 2009. So the second issue I'm going to address is um, the extent to which a communication strategy is important for OER in Africa or for any higher education initiative. Uh, one of the key lessons we've learned from decades of engagement with development is that you're only as effective as effective as you are visible. Visibility has many dimensions, which I won't go into in any, in any detail, but two dimensions are worth mentioning here. One of them is selling the OER concept to key stakeholders, and the second one is delivering proof of concept, which can then be used to develop further partnerships. In 2010, I reviewed the OER communication strategy, and I posed six clusters of questions. The first cluster was whether there was a common understanding uh, within OER Africa and in terms of, uh, of communication, and in terms of how OER Africa was integrated with its parent uh, organization, Saidi. Uh, and I asked how central communication was to the work of the initiative. Secondly, uh, I asked how sustainable uh, communication was when it relied very heavily on two people traveling to conferences and to talk to institutions, delivering PowerPoint presentations, keynote addresses, and networking as a means of raising awareness of and creating demand for OER. Uh, to what, how proven was the OER concept in Africa and to what extent should the strategy be focusing on case studies or stories uh, which would showcase areas in which it was working, for example, in health OER. The third question were related to OER Africa's messages. Were they the right ones? Do they clearly and effectively articulate OER Africa's unique selling points uh, and were they appropriate or realistic? So there was a question there about you know, um, OER saying what it, it, it intended to do as opposed to what it could actually prove it could do. Um, fourth, there was a question about the complexity of the OER Africa offering. It's not an easy thing to explain to people. Uh, do the current materials communicate the core ele elements of the offering clearly and effectively? Uh, was there a need to simplify and de-jargonize the language describing OER Africa? Um, fifth, uh, OER Africa had gone through this iterative process 
of identifying its core stakeholders and potential partners, which is extremely good practice as the first thing you need to do for any initiative that's, that's uh, predicated on engagement with others is to be clear about who you want to engage with. Uh, and this speaks, you know, this is as true for communication as it is, as it is for anything else. Um, to what extent uh, has this process enabled the mapping of key target audiences uh, for the communication work? And how rig rigorously has the strategy matched its products with the audience? Uh, and then the final sort of cluster of questions was, um, and which stem from the audience question, uh, should the website be the primary means of communication for OER Africa? Particularly given the fact that a lot of people don't have the bandwidth to access web, uh, websites uh, you know, to the extent that they should. Um, how much should be invested in the website and web platform as opposed to other communication tools and media, of which there are many, including social media and, and many forms of engagement which don't necessarily rely on technology. Um, how realistic is it to create a platform and expect others to own that platform and to populate it with content? This is a huge problem that most uh, developers of websites and communicate, strategic communicators have, which is that you, know, you expect uh, ownership to transfer from yourselves to the audience, but the audience don't necessarily engage with the platform in the same way that you envisage it. Um, to what extent is it realistic to expect online communities to be self-organizing? Now, this was a hallmark of the OER Africa uh, kind of offering. And how plausibly can attribution for enabling the work of others be claimed and measured? Um, you know, uh, can the gathering of statistics on the website be used to generalize into a results culture that sees OER harnessing evidence to inform its communication. Uh, and most of the challenges that you know, uh, arose and were implied by these questions seem to have been addressed by the OER Africa team, either fully or to the extent possible. Um, of course, a lot of this stuff is at the very technical uh, and operational nature. Um, uh, OER Africa has made great strides, uh, in particular via its focus on health OER, in demonstrating the power of OER uh, and health being a particular sector where OER is gaining traction. Um, now, I think there needs to be some sort of a shift in this effort. Uh, what should now take center stage is the effort to take OER beyond the realm of the converted, to integrate it as a key tool for transforming higher education systems in Africa. Uh, for this to happen, there is a need to elevate the pitch by sharing lessons of what OER Africa has learned so far with wider audiences. Uh, this convening clearly represents an important first step in such an effort. Uh, additionally, however, there needs to be a purposive, well-crafted effort to cultivate partnerships with other actors in higher education in Africa. Some of these are intermediaries who can be critical in ensuring OER delivers on its promise. Others are funding higher education uh, capacity and development. The third uh, question I'd like to try and sort of address is the question of whether uh, technology and innovation amount to the same thing. Uh, policymakers tend to conflate the two things, um, but when it comes to higher education in Africa, how useful is this conflation? If Africa is to revitalize its higher education sector, will either technology or innovation suffice? Um, my sense is that there's no either or in determining whether OER's transformative potential resides in technology or innovation. Technology is clearly hardwired into the concept of OER, which identifies digital applications, such as streamed video, webcasts, webinars, podcasts, and so on, as key educational resources, uh, adding to the traditional materials that we commonly associate with higher education. Um, the means of delivery of OER also heavily emphasize the need for reliable and affordable internet, something that is now widely recognized in tertiary education as a fundamental condition for effective learning. Um, how technology is applied in education, in higher education, makes the difference between whether it is innovative or simply ritualistic. Innovation applies as much to the content itself as to the means of communicating that content. The concern here is that policymakers are still at the stage where they fetishize technology as a solution to all of Africa's problems, when in fact the real transformative potential of OER lies in the pedagogical innovations inherent in the concept. The proliferation of ICTs presents an unprecedented set of opportunities to deliver education to millions who have in the past been unable to benefit. Telecoms costs are falling dramatically as access to mobile phones approaches saturation point. This can only be a good thing from many perspectives. However, uh, more efforts needed to sell the innovative potential behind OER itself. 
how it can revolutionize teaching and learning at a time when there are existential questions being asked about the relevance and appropriateness of the ped ped pedagogy many African universities have borrowed from the Western Academy and are struggling to implement. The innovative power of OER has the potential to change the game and technology is an important part of the story, but by no means the full extent of it. Right, the last uh, point I'd like to uh, address is the role or roles that an initiative like OER Africa should play going forwards in transforming pedagogical practices in Africa's higher education sector. Um, uh, I think uh, not being an expert on, on, on teaching and learning, you know, there's not so much I can say about methodologically or, or content-wise what OER Africa needs to do to actually try and shape uh, the, the higher education sector uh, substantively. But what I can say is that, you know, at the beginning of the presentation, I mentioned that OER Africa could not realistically take on the burden of transforming the tertiary education sector in Africa single-handedly. Um, in my work, I come across many uh, new and emerging players in higher education in this ecosystem that OER Africa really needs to work with. Um, there are a number of initiatives that typically involve networks of universities uh, which do things like develop common curricula. Um, for example, there's PASGA, the Pan-African Social Governance Research Initiative, uh, which is working with at least 12 universities that I know of to develop a common curriculum, a master's in research and public policy, to try and fill the gap in, in this area. Um, you know, we have master's programs in, in disciplines such as economics, but there is no master's program in research and public policy, which A, prepares uh, you know, students and graduates to engage in public policy, and B, prepares them to be potential PhD scholars. So this is something that PASGA is spearheading. Uh, it also works on issues such as um, you know, research methods and has a whole training program for that. I, I see them as a potentially important partner for OER Africa. Um, if anything, um, if, if, if the partnership is not already being pursued with them, it should be. Uh, another important higher education initiative is the uh, Public Policy Schools Initiative, which I think Wits University is centrally involved in. Um, it's funded by a number of uh, prominent uh, uh, private donors, uh, and it seeks to build a, a cater of future African scholars uh, who will not only be uh, very strong in terms of adding to the body of knowledge uh, in social science, but will also uh, be practically engaged in, in addressing Africa's development challenges. Um, another initiative that I think uh, has, uh, uh, another initiative that I think that um, OER Africa should be engaged with is something called CARTA, C-A-R-T-A. CARTA is a doctoral training program that was launched uh, and conceived of and initiated by APHRC, the African Population Health Research Centre, which is also based in Nairobi, uh, and it's it, it's been extremely successful. I was privileged to um, to teach the re, uh, policy influence module. Uh, with another colleague last year and be exposed to PhD candidates who have almost finished. These are sci scientists um, and researchers who are of the highest caliber throughout Africa. Um, and I think that they would all benefit from being from great exposure to OER resources uh, and to the whole uh, OER kind of uh, you know, philosophy um, and, and, and system. Um, there's also the Pan-African University, which most of you would have heard about which is a recently launched uh, concept, supported, I think, by the Swedes uh, and others. Um, so there, there is ample effort of, you know, ample evidence of, uh, of a purposive effort to try and rebuild and revitalize the tertiary education system in Africa. And there are a number of players based on the African continent with a Pan-African footprint who are working towards this endeavor. And I, and I strongly suggest that OER Africa needs to elevate its pitch. Um, you know, it, it, um, if the last 15 years have been a period of incubation, exploration, learning for OER in Africa, then these have been very successful uh, uh, years, uh, but the time is now ripe to take things to a new level. Uh, OER Africa as a vehicle, I think, needs to be bigger, stronger, and more engaged. In terms of its visibility as, a, as an entity, it needs to be, um, you know, at that sort of be able to, to be at the same pitch as some of the other Pan-African initiatives. Uh, it needs to engage much more in uh, strategic communication. It needs to also um, uh, work much more closely on issues such as the uptake of research, uh, which is a growing uh, focus of a lot of universities uh, now in Africa. 
uh, sort of designing research processes to ensure that uptake is hardwired into the DNA of the research initiatives, making sure that at every stage policymakers are engaged uh, with the research as it emerges. I think that OER, OER as, a, as a concept can actually make a huge difference uh, to research uptake. So I, I think this is an area that requires a more muscular presence, right? OER Africa, and a much sort of deeper engagement uh, and a much more visible engagement. Um, again, please accept my sincere apologies for not being able to be with you in person. Um, and thank you very much for giving me this opportunity uh, to present to you. Thank you.